introduce Orange first, and I believe it's Mushi to tell us about how he feels going into the match. And Mushi with Orange is with us now. And before I ask you about the next game, I saw the one versus one last night with Ice Ice Ice. Was that fun for you? Yeah, we are having fun. You guys were kind of, uh, I'm trying to think of a good way to say this without swearing. Um, you were kind of needling each other. I could see you looking at each other kind of like, I've got this kind of a thing. Yeah. You guys are friends? Yeah, we are very good friends. Yeah. And what are you thinking going ahead into the next match against Fnatic? Uh, sorry? What are you thinking ahead of the next game with Fnatic? Uh, I think we are confident about this. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I know you have a lot of fans watching, so we're really excited to see what happens. Good luck. Yeah, thank you very All much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Mushi didn't really suck that hard in his last game. It was actually the 1v1 championships where he went 0-1, 0 and came second place in the solo. And he's an amazing mid player. But he's also joined by four other amazing players. Ohio, KYXY, Net and Extinct. I think they're the favorites going into this match. I agree with you. I think uh, Orange is slightly ahead of Fnatic. Uh, and that's with all respect in the world for Fnatic. I love that team to death. They have some of the, the most impressive players in all of Europe. I just think Orange is a bit ahead of the curve in, in terms of strategy and execution of it. Uh, but I think this is going to be a an, an very intense game, just like every other match we've seen so far. Yeah, it uh, certainly will be. And well, even though Orange are the favorites, you can never count out Fnatic. Oh, definitely. And I'm, I'm super interested to what, what they have to say in their interview. You saw Era trying to sneak in on Mushi's interview earlier. So let's see what he's got to say and let's see if Fnatic are ready for the game. And we have Era with Fnatic with us right now. Congratulations on your success so far. And from what I understand, you've really outperformed everyone's expectations. How does that feel? Feels really good, of course. Um, dropping the series versus Tongfu wasn't the best, but then we gained the momentum boost from the win. Uh, in the loser bracket, and now we're hopefully, hopefully going to win one more game and just get back into it. And it sounds like you're the youngest player at the International this year. What is it like for you to come into this kind of arena on this grand of a scale and to, to have that experience? Not the youngest. Koikva is two weeks younger than me. By two weeks? <laughs> oh, come on. All right, all right, okay. Well, well, so course. second youngest. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, it's uh, something else. Being the youngest player, I've always been like, youngest in every team I've been to, but having mature guys in my team, well, mature and mature, but you know. They, they, <laughs> it's relative, they, they, it's all relative. They treat, me, they treat me well, so like I, I can grow in that sense, like in the team, so it, it's awesome. And what are your thoughts ahead of facing Orange? I think it's gonna be a good game for us. I think we, we can easily win against them. All right, best of luck, second youngest member. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we have to remember, with Fnatic as a team, this is their first TI appearance. They're already a top eight, it's a great performance. And even though they're in the lower bracket, they got knocked down to the lower bracket by Tong Fu, who beat them 2-0. And of course, Tong Fu could have easily beaten Na'Vi in that last game. It could have gone their way and they could have been in the grand final. So despite being knocked down, going up against Orange, we do say Orange are the favorites, but Fnatic can surprise, I believe, anybody in this tournament. I think they're capable of winning a map against any team. And now it's a best of one, it's really, really scary. Well, according to the last match performance, they had a Bloodseeker with no boots, Diffusal, Quelling Blade, and Casual Eagle Song. That's, that's just how they roll. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to say about that, Jacob? I mean, I agree with James. This matchup, just like pretty much every other matchup to, today, has been a 50-50 go, especially in the best of ones. I, I, I expect Liquid and IG to be a close match because Liquid can, can bring out the best in themselves, but also in terms of strategies. And I feel Fnatic can do the same. They have one of the best, I think, Era is leading the fantasy board right now, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't think... At least he's leading a Nuxi's fantasy board. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> did, okay. Did I, did I... Oh my god, I'm dying. <laughs> don't die. I've got a I, cough I take and I'm not over. meant to cough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, you're fine. Perfect. Okay. You're alive. Great. Yeah. I think there are three keys to Fnatic's uh, game right now. Uh, the first of all, I talked about yesterday, Life Stealer overall uh, win rate 71%. Era is probably the best Life Stealer in the world, so you have to watch about that hero. Um, Weaver, they've picked it in 13 of the uh, 16 games they've played so far, so it's a hero they really, really value. It's in Trixie, it's not doing particularly well, it's 8 and 5, but if they feel so comfortable, there's something about it. And then finally, there's Meepo, of course, uh, and uh, No Tails micro skills, you never know. What will happen? Honey that. did say though they won't pick Meepo in the best of one. Uh, 
You never know. Are you gonna call him out again? No, I, I'm saying <laughs> I wouldn't say I wouldn't entirely give away my strat if I wasn't a best of one. He's trying to throw orange off. <laughs> throw orange right. off. Right. Guys, ready for the game? It's just started. We almost had a bit of a problem. Been but, waiting uh, all day. Looks like we're ready. So. Predictions. Yeah, we've got to do predictions. Yep. That's the most fun part. I'll start with Team Milk. We're rooting for Fnatic. We are. Sindarin thought that Orange was the top three, along with Navi and Alliance. I'm going to roll with it. Go with Orange. Okay. Uh, I'm going to join. Uh, I'm going to come over to the, to the yeah, light. Yeah, yeah. Walk towards the light. Next I'm time, James. the next game, we do the You're same. You're a monster, Mal. <laughs> You're a monster. I am I a would, monster. I would never join you. <laughs> Next yes. game, we do the same and we make it interesting. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, so we're going to get live into the game now. It's Orange versus Fnatic. It's a best of one. The winner will actually be securing a top six finish, which is really huge with the amount of talent there has been here. And of course, the loser will finish their tournament eighth and seventh place joint. So best of luck to both teams. Hope you guys enjoy the games. Over to the hall. Orange versus Fnatic. Welcome back, everybody, here to the Better Royal Hall. I am Toby One. And I'm Wagamama. And we're back here again, man. We got to relax for the entire morning, just chilling ourselves out, watching some fantastic Dota. Some fantastic Dota yeah. as well. That Key punch word. was... Key word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would I give them maybe 10 one 10 to 5% chance, chance of winning that game. <laughs> And they won it. That's a pretty high percentage of shares, that's, man. And that's a high mm. chance. It was. Yeah. It was. You know what? With all the great Dota that's already happened today, we've got four big time. matches as well coming up tonight. We do. I want to look straight into it Let's right now because I know there's a couple of people here in the crowd that do believe, but I don't know how hard <laughs> they can believe when we already have on the Fnatic lineup Chen as well as Darkseer. So it looks like we're going to stay true to the call from Fly that Meepo will not be picked up here um, as far as this matchup goes. The best of one against Orange. It goes down to what Orange picks, Orange really. Image. I mean, Meepo will always remain a counter pick. Orange Not gonna say that, to you know, he's probably the best against Anti Mage. He's really, really amazing against Anti Mage. Same as Furion. So, so far, it it's just, it just means possible. Era has to multitask. But, yeah. <laughs> and if Hani says they won't pick in a best of one, I feel this is exactly a type of hero that you should pick in a best of one if you want to have a surprise win, mm -hmm. like the Ursa picks we saw yesterday yep. in the lower bracket. is a really good hero mm -hmm. as well for that kind of style. Yeah. So the only issue is when you start to get kited around, as we saw early today as well. And here, like Andy Major, he to loves man. to escape from that kind of stuff. Uh, let's also look at our bands. I know uh, was mentioned uh, by the panel boys that Live Stealer, one of uh, eras, if not like the best Live Stealer player in all of Europe right now. He is at least one of the guys who likes it the most. I mean, there's also Hvost, you can't Ten really count him out. Remaining. But Era, he has yeah. a certain love, passion. Oranges I don't know what to call it for Live Stealer. Crush. Yes. A crush. A crush we can I, go I, with. Yes, a relationship almost. Yes. And uh, of course we saw Wisp being banned out and Batrider and Visage. Now heading into the second stage, Alchemist, he made it through the first picks. That he did. That he did. But again, like, we, we've been seeing like LG, LGDCN now recently departed. Um, like they were a team that always liked that. And it was a big, big combo. Like there's Darks here as well as Alchemist together. You don't want to let it through, but it seems as we go through this tournament, there's been this transition now into like, be it Chen's or be it these fantastic supporters. They've become more of a higher priority in the later portion of the playoffs. I agree. I would say that the supporters have even more a clear impact in the game. Sometimes the supporters, what they do, it kind of is something that shines Ten in the background that you mean. can't really point to. But when you have a hero like Chen, it's really easy to say, like, this guy is Five controlling the game, mean. like he's steering the game. Mm -hmm. And we see another push he's hero being time. banned out by Orange. Banning out the DK against the Chen lineup is just fully reasonable that you would do. Yeah. But I'm still a little bit surprised that this instant Nature's Prophet into Anti-Mage I mean, we saw Alliance play Nature's Prophet Anti-Mage earlier today, but that was, that was not a first, or a first phase Anti-Mage. You pick it later on, Fnatic's I feel, but now pick. Fnatic can really custom design a lineup against this. Yeah, I know I was having a chat to, actually can't remember who it was Orange this morning, uh, but when we, f when we saw that first pick Spectre, and the conversation instantly turned to, you kind of want to make an impression straight from the very, very start that you want to play a late game farming and hope that the other team goes along the same lines as you, saying, yeah, we agree to a plus 60 minute game, <laughs> and, and they can feel comfortable in, 
in your, in your situation there. But you look at Fnatic right now with VS, with Chen, with Darkseer. They've got great team fight seconds. with the Venture Spirit and the Chen. We've got a good aura stack. I wouldn't even be surprised if Orange go anywhere near Emil Five here if that middle lane of Beastmaster is high on the list as well to pick up. And it we've is. got other great heroes as well which are available, which all can just like couple up with these auras. Yeah. I wouldn't say that Beastmaster here that I think about when I think Fnatic, yep. but with the lineup they have now and against Anti-Mage as well as Nature's Prophet, Beastmaster is really incredible. Mm -hmm. So we might just see them pick it up and let Hani play it on the solo mid. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I've seen him play it for a while, but he does it's, play... It has, it has been a long time. Yeah. He's, he's spent most of his time playing DKs in the middle lane, but yeah. he, he doesn't have that option this time around. The, nope. the other normal couplers that they'll do with this negative armor strat have also been taken out. One of the bigger ones was actually Alchemists. Alchemists, exactly. So they can't really go for that, but there's always the Shadow Fiend. That's Just true. Say it. Like Shadow Fiend, he is not amazing against Anti Mage, but he is good. And when you have a Crystal Maiden in enemy team, if you have a BKB, you can also get rid of her dis uh, her uh, stun. So it's very easy to get out of a Frostbite just clicking Ten it. Seconds remaining. And uh, I'm not I'm not gonna say that Fnatic won't go down that line. Era plays uh, Lifesteal every now or oh, Shadow Fiend every now and then as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they got their fourth and final pick in this stage. They, uh, the last man out was, of course, the OD. So they look towards that middle lane, of course. Uh, one of the heroes, which was one of the two heroes, which we always called during the preliminaries and the start of the playoffs. Like, Razor and OD were always those guys that flagged on our warning list. But again, with the transition of the tournament, with the way it's been flowing, bumps less, down the priority list. Less focus on him, yeah. And I, I'm really happy about that, to be honest. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to hate on OD, but I, I kind of do. It's, you, you could hate. You could it, hate. It's not interesting. Interesting to watch the mid lane where there's an OD in the game. So at least we're gonna see. And both teams still have to pick up their mid uh, mid soul. Yep. Waiting to the very very last to actually do that kind of thing. So we'll get to see who our mid battle is gonna be. Of course, as far as those heroes go, Queen of Pain's already been banned down here. So we've got the Pox available. We've got the TAs available. We've got anything available for the middle lane. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. TA is also something that you can combine up with. Ventral Spirit stun being so amazing. Right. It gives you yep. less of an AOE and less of catch out though. So you can't really kill off the Furion when he has his Shadow Blade as easily, or the Anti-Mage, because you have no Disable on it. Uh, I'm wondering right now if they're tossing up the... <laughs> and there it is. Oh, there's Yarasaf, the Shadow Orange Fiend. Yeah. We're looking at our Aura Strat right now, and Orange should be very, very careful about this. If this is going to be what we assume it to be, which is Trixie on the long lane, and this is going to be him basically going, please hope I don't die, and maybe get a little bit of farm. If he is going to be put in that position, then he'll just abandon, go a little bit jungle, and Chen can rotate around. But when you got Chen, VS, early smoke, early early rotation around, they have to help that SF if he's playing in mid, and I say the if on that Ten one as well, seconds. because he could also be a safe lane solo, SF is a very vulnerable hero Five in the early stages of the game. He is, he is for sure. And looking over to Mushi now, I'm thinking, what do Orange want for Reserve a second support? Time. I mean, the Shadow Fiend is pretty obvious that Fnatic wanted, but what do Orange really want to combine now? They need to have some reliable disable, I feel, against Shadow Fiends to just have something to lock him down. Mm -hmm. And of course, it, many, it many almost feels like you need a Bane in this scenario. Yeah, Bane would be beautiful because then you have a lockdown even through the BKB. So I would probably agree with that pickup. Yeah, They're going to go on dying. Ooh. Oh, that's a big Fnatic surprise. Correct me if I'm wrong, but first time on the main stage. First time I've seen it. Yeah. First time we saw it in the group. We'll, 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 get, to we'll yeah. get to go to K-Poptosis about that one a little yeah. bit later. He'll, he'll, give us, he'll give us our... our our sexy undying stats. Yeah, that's what it's all about. He is an amazing hero, remaining. though. Maybe not so sexy, considering he is actually dead. He's pretty uh, slender. And Five rather toothy. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's more oh. like, like a rake. We, we should see a ban out now on the Beastmaster, Orange's I really feel, from Mushi. Yeah. And Gyrocopter was the ban out from Fly, so doesn't want to have any solo mid gyro to go this up. Is, this is actually a really, like, the possibility for aggression here. I, I know we we watch a lot oh, of yeah. Undying in the European scene, and we can basically thank Gold Black a lot for that, um, as well as a couple of other, te other teams. But as an aggressive hero, oh, he destroys. Mm -hmm. And you want to combine up Crystal Maiden and Undying together, I'm not feeling the aggressive tri lane unless any He's mage goes time. solo. Yes, but it can. Anti-Mage can definitely go solo safe lane against the Darkseer. If you pull him regen, he can lane up there. And we've seen that done by so many carry players where they do perfectly fine. So an aggressive tri lane with a Crystal Maiden and Undying plus one. They take uh, out the Druid instead. The lone Druid. So scared of that addition to the push, but I feel that with Auras, you could even have better addition to the push. Th this push comes differently, and that's why yeah. I'm, a bit yeah, I'm surprised as you with this last pick. Like, if you say, okay, well, I'm feeling the push, Lone Druid logically will come up in your mind, but the strength of this lineup 
it doesn't come through the, the normal tower pushes. It comes by the strength of when you're actually together, together fighting as a team. Um, that is, that's the scary remain. thing. That's a really scary thing. Any mage can be walking around with like hearts and butterflies and all Five this kind of shizzle, remain. but it won't be enough to survive when you get Fnatic fully grouped up here. Undyne might have time. a better chance because he'd be stealing all their strength during the fight. The Crystal Maiden, she's a fragile woman. Nature's Prophet, he can snap like a twig. And That's now we get Morphling. Morphling. So Ira does get his hero, and that does mean that we'll see SF in that solo mid. Yeah, we should see SF mid, unless it's a mid hero that Mushi picks up now that's weak for, uh, yeah. for a Morphling, but SF doesn't want. Because you can kind of switch it around. Shadow Fiend is amazing as a hard carry as well, and mm. Morphling can be done mid. Fnatic did it a lot when they came into a Dota scene, but that's a long, long days ago. Yeah, that was back when we had, like, Wraith Band, you pull a couple of consumables, and, uh, well, maybe it will be a Templar Assassin. TA. Yeah, yeah, yeah she, she's in the crowd, but Five maybe not in the draft. I, I don't think Mushi will go for a TA in this game. It mm. feels weird. They need more Disable. They Reserve only have... Time. The frostbite right now to disable That's and true. against the morphling against <laughs> the shadow fiend that is so risky so they have to go aggressive trying morphling the guy known as the guy with four escape mechanisms strength morph waveform technically you got to leave on a stun with adaptive strike you jumped out to the replicate and then you get everything else it's it's so difficult to kill off this hero it's it's almost Five like the opposite poles you got like the, you got like the ooh, okay there's some good disable it's a good disable it's a good disable i'm wondering where the follow-up really comes though where so. is it? Where is the AOE? Like, if this is Fluff and stuff playing Crystal, Crystal Maiden, then I'll say instantly, yeah, I know what we're doing right here. Yeah. But with with the Prophet Ultimate, with the Anti Mage, it's very difficult to get that mana void absolutely perfect. Find that one hero on the low mana when they're all stacked together in the middle of an RP. That's that's yeah. that's, a, that's a big big ball of death. At least they have a decent amount of things that can castle out uh, Shadow Fiend's ultimate now. They also have Empower, which is amazing for a late game for Anti Mage. But I would still give the late game towards Fnatic. They Agreed. have the possibility Agreed. of having Damage Wolf. They have a Vengeful, who's amazing. And they have Shadow Fiend along with Morphling. So I feel Orange, if they go safe lane and just lane this one out, mm -hmm. they're also going to fall, beh uh, fall behind seconds. really fast. I agree. They've really got to stick it to Fnatic. They've really got to stick it to them. But that's, it's, a it's a tough ask, man. It's a really tough ask, uh, but we're going to see if the ask is possible and so we get ourselves into the game and we'll see who's going to be going where and who's going to be playing who. So we start off and over on at the dire side, it will be Orange and we'll have Mushi taking up the roles at Annie Mage, was extinct onto the Crystal Maiden. KYXY will be the Magnus following up behind him is Ohio as the Nature's Prophet and that leads our final one, Net supporting as the Undying. And for yeah. Fnatic, No Tail, the man which everybody loves to watch play Meepo, you might, be, you might believe in him if he gets through into game number three, into the best of three in the next round, but they have to exactly. get past Orange to do such a thing. He'll be the Chen in this game. Trixie will be the Dark Seer. Looks like he's already built to go into the jungle, as well as take harassment on the top lane. Hani is the SF. He has been pulled extra consumables to start with, with that Wraith Ban. That leaves Era on that bottom lane as the Morphling, or even scattered out by the trees. And then our last one, but not least, Fly as a scantily clad Vengeful Spirit. Yeah, looking over to Orange now, of course, they're moving out in the jungle here. Fnatic Era is standing here and just watching them. He cannot die. He can wave for him away or whatever. But looking over to what they are doing, they have a Chris they have a anti mage with Kelling Blade and Stout Shield, and they still go aggressive trialing with this. Radiant structures. So. This is going to be a real rough lane. You're running. You're trying to run two melee heroes on an aggressive tri lane. The thing is that it will be easy at first, but then there's Chen. Yep. Like if if No Tail plays this correctly, he can come in and have a huge impact on his lane. So, and they don't. Do they even uh, place down a sentry ward towards for Chen Ganks? At, th at this point, uh, well, so the sentry war is down for Fnatic. They're trying to control up their camps, but they yeah. won't have that pool spot just yet. The die yeah. ward is blocking it. No luck with that D ward. But so we're going to see a safe lane Furion against the Darks here. That's going to be a pretty good lane for Furion, to be honest. But for the mid, Shadow Fiend against the melee hero with pooled regen on the Shadow Fiend, that's a decent lane unless he gets ganked. Yeah, that it will be. Let's watch his last hits. I also want to keep my eyes, and there's actually Net dropping down yeah. extra sentry ward. He blocks up the hard camp, and that's exactly where Notel was going to get himself a really good creep. The secondary ward blocking the second hard camp as well. So they got options for the easy camp, or actually, they didn't have out options for any of the camps. Every single camp, bar the easy camp, has spawned. So if they want to vol, they can do such a thing. But that is the only option that's available to this Chen right now. They're quite useless. He may it's as well go die jungle. In fact, that looks exactly where Notel is headed. I like how Net just stays here on top of everything, just controlling the enemy enemy jungle and he's even gonna check if the Chen took a creep 
And he's got block it again. Yeah. Wow, he's just being such a nuisance. This is serious commitment, but it does also force Orange to waste their, their second Sentry Ward down here. And that's not a bad thing to have happen, because now Nodel, he knows he's free to do whatever he wants in this top lane. The fact that he's up here, this is going to make Ohio a little bit more careful as well. The yeah. call's going to come from that saying they're not trying to contest me in the jungle, which means Nodel, he's got to be inside our jungle. Keep your eyes out for this one, especially when Ohio does things like this, when he starts pulling in the creep waves, come underneath his tower, because that's when Trixie can then do his little stuff when you got the high, higher levels up in the iron shell. Yeah, it's still huge by Warrens because they force out both the Chen and the Vengeful into an aggressive state. But of course, that's not always a bad thing. Chen is amazing for roaming and Vengeful as well. Mm -hmm. So they will try and do so. But I feel that their ganks are not that strong. And Vengeful can't, you know, she can't fall back to pooling and creep camp and getting experience. And they are losing bottom really hard. There's one CS. Oh, donkeys, on donkeys, 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 donkeys. They don't have enough damage. Oh. It's if going too fast with the movement speed. And that also revealed their malicious intent towards the mid lane. Why can't they just live Look as how friends? Ohio is scouting as well with his treants. He's just keeping good check here. Well, he, he knows they're rotating. He knows the yeah, chance. Yeah, right now, it's just been a gank and net. Well, is this just harassment on Eero? There's no way he could really get a kill while he ste steals the strength. Morphling already up in that second point. If he wants to, he can just strength morph himself up anyway. So. Difficult to kill this bottom lane, but they have got very little to no farm on him. One last hit in total. Oh, top is going to be hard now. He has a TP scroll or oh, TP available mm -hmm. with his oh. teleportation. He's going to body block as he runs away. It's nicely moved. See how nice he can do it. It's really good so far. He's got the TP, but oh, Fly can have invasion. to stun him up, and there goes the first stun. Hellbear with a stun as well. No tell, he's got a nuke up his sleeve. Throws it. Trixie's not there in time. Out to safety. Ohio is out and home. Yeah, and that was only all his body blocking that saved him there, because Vengeful, sure, she got the stun off, but it was too late. Yep. Trixie really needed to be in closer just then. But even then, he didn't have himself a vac. He just needed to have the Iron Shell damage there as, as an option. Yeah, so nice play by Ohio, really getting out there. But this top lane, the tower will most likely fall. Very often we see when Darkseid goes, goes hijacking the creeps, the tower just falls so fast. And now with a Chen up here as well, it should really go down in the next couple of minutes or minute or two. Yeah, just a very easy creep skip Dyer's and Sol Ring as well too. So attack. there's there's going to be never ending Iron Shells on this top lane. How and is mid doing actually? We see a really, really high CS on the on the Shadow Fiend. 22 for 6 against 20 for 1. Hasn't been Dyer's controlled at all by the Magnus, but that's also to be attack. expected. Like Magnus isn't a mid controller. Yeah. Magnus is a, I, I'll find my farm, hope I get to Arcane Brutes, Blink Dagger, and then we start killing. Even so, we're talking about him out farming Mushi, who has a completely uncontested lane on bottom. There's a Morphling watching him farm. So that's amazingly done so far by Honey. We'll get our first rotation of support heroes. Trixie, oh, he's in a really bad position there. Try and body block him in. Trixie able to slither his way past the Treants. Yeah, Ohio wants again. to keep chasing him though, but this creep wave's already been pulled down Top and all stay with him. Is it gonna be the knight? Let's look at net. Catapult, is it gonna be good? Net's got it. Uh, he gets helped by Ohio. Nice tonight. Meanwhile well on lane, bottom lane. Yep, that's a big dive by Mushi, but Fly couldn't TP in in time to get the stun out. Yeah, just some aggressive play there. Forces down the Vengeful again. Really cross all lanes. The, the second you kind of thought like that the TP came top lane, then you think Eero will get a little bit more space, but Orange, they still decide to dive with two players. It, it's like they're not even phased by it. They know they can still probably, like if they force the waveform out of the Morphling, then they could just slowly hold him there. He's not going to do any damage back if he's strength morphing, and then they'll find themselves some kills. And Fnatic, they're kind of happy with just living with this Morphling because they know the impact this SF's going to have. He's already up at level 6, doesn't need the ultimate, and right now it's Souls. The four levels up in the Shadow Razors is the primary thing he's also searching for, and that's when you're going to see that big burst damage coming the way of a hero like KYXY. He gets hit by two of those Razors and a couple of hits from Shadow Fiend, and he'll basically be dead if yeah. he overcommits himself. Shadow Fiend really, really hurts, and his right click goes through the roof in just about, you know, 12 minutes from now, he's gonna hit like a truck. But I feel that it was really deny. sad they couldn't commit more to the top tower and get the last hit on it. A deny is really, really big pre-five minutes. It's so much gold. KYXY just uh, showing off there in a little bit in the middle lane, just saying, now I'm level six, I have RP. Just keep this in mind, SF, because he will die very quickly if there's even one person that can follow up and help KYXY after he lands that RP. But he needs that one person. And right now, I'm not seeing vision on the map for Fnatic. Yeah. I see that Observer Ward just coming down by Chen across the middle lane, but the Observer Wars of Orange are about to time out. So Chen can re-enter his base. We hit that six-minute mark, and that is, of course, when all the wars start to time. Yeah, that's true. And 
for now, both teams playing pretty passive, I would say. We see some movement around by no -tail and Vengeful just staying down here trying to protect Era so that he doesn't get uh, get caught out. Radiant's middle tower is under game attack. has slowed down a little bit after that rotation towards the top. In the Trixie's on his way towards that mech. He's, he's having a really fun time. No tell. He, he did snipe that invis rune as well from the top lane, so that's where the six minute rune ended up going. Stun on bottom. Oh, Not really. You don't, they don't have any way of killing the anti mage. No. They, they need more lockdown, or it just turns into chase. This is crazy, he has on the Shadow Fiend. They stacked. I, I believe he even stacked for himself the small camp. Or if it was stacked for him, I'm not sure. But the amount of farm that he's finding is really amazing. Yeah. Either, either way you look at it, when you hit that level 8 on SF and you're only six minutes into a game, you feel very secure in life, the universe and everything. Yeah. Now stacking the big camp. And with level 8, you can clear the stacks so easily. It's just two raises and some right clicks, and you kill big camp. Yep. We saw him do an easy one, and all he did was, he, it was even saving the mana. Throw one raise and then just right click them down. Because he can do that with the easy camps. Exactly. And no talent, just subbing in a new wild wind. Looks like there's a lot of movement coming out here from Orange. The two supporters are now coming towards the mid lane. So this is what we're talking about, where you want to try and get someone to combine up with the Magnus. With his, with his RP, but in this scenario, KYXY without the Blink Dagger, without Arcane Boost, he's going to skewer in to an RP. And there it is, skewer down, and already Harney, because this Observer Ward is seeing very clearly to the other side of the river, you oh, can yeah. see that, that, that vision range right there, he knew exactly what was coming his way. Yeah, and we also should mention that Mushi headed up top, starts finding farm up there, and that forces Furion into the jungle a little bit. He's up to 1400 gold, has boots and ring of protection, so... Might still be going for Midas, not entirely sure. Or he's just rushing for uh, Shadow Blade. We'll find out soon, and man. another stack on the big camp, and Hani really prepping for himself. Yeah, that's, gonna, that's a lot of money to come yeah. in right there. Because look at it, when he comes out to the mid lane, he clears the, mid, uh, the normal lane creep so fast that this is not really downtime for him going out in the jungle and just killing this off. And we're looking at a very, very early BKB at this game. I also want to point out, too, his early levels. We talked about the aura stack. In, uh, in the drafting time, and that's exactly what we're actually not really getting from the VS. She hasn't even hit level 4 just yet, but the SF, who is level 9, now, well, he has the extra point up in his ultimate, but we're getting closer towards his presence in the Dark Lords. Yeah. And with, with that combining up, with then the mech to add on top of that one, and Chen is going to bring in more auras soon, actually. Really, these supports are very underleveled. Yeah, but we are very early on in the game, so the aura on Vengeful is not more effective than Wave of Terror, at least this early on. Yeah. Because it deals some damage, lowers the armor, and also gives you vision for a very brief time, so it's nice to use. And Trixie's he's almost finished his mech up here. We're nine minutes in, he's, th he's 200 or so gold away from having his full mech. Yeah, and SF passed the 82 CS mark. He's up to 85 now, nine minutes in. Of course, on your lane, they will spawn 82 creeps in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So he's farming more than the full free farm on lane. That's what keeps him so far ahead in the net worth as well. You check out that gold, and it's seeing about 1,500, in fact, in front of his opposite mid solo. And the gold advantage for Fnatic is already up at 2,000. Experience about 1,500 as well. So everything is slowly just going their way. I'm actually wondering right now, man, is Orange aware of this? Because they'll be looking at their lanes going, well, how's our bottom lane looking? KYXY is now down here. He's trying to look for a kill. Haven't been successful. Undying's trying to find his maybe his level 6, so Ohio. He did buy up the full hand of Midas, so let's say later in the game, he's still going to have a lot of money, a lot of ex extra experience. And Mushi is on his way to a Battle Fury, and decent timing for it as well. So maybe they're not too concerned about this, or maybe they should be a little bit more concerned. They should be a lot more concerned because they have 51 CS 10 minutes in on Antimage, which is not horrible, but it's not really that good. They had a really good offlane, but now with the with the rotations in the first few minutes there by Fnatic, I think they won a little bit more space for themselves. So they are definitely falling behind for the mid game, and that's when it's going to be dangerous against any Chen lineup. You have to be wary about losing your towers. We've got smoke moving right now from KYXY as well as Extinct. They walk underneath the Radiant Observer Ward. At the same time, Chen's made an army of the undead. They yeah. want to go to the bottom lane and push, it's but it's the middle lane. We always middle talked lane. about that possibility with the Observer Ward. Sees him around the corner, skewer in. RP is too far away into the tree line. Now RP, he fakes it three times. Stunned up, Harney winding up the oldie. The RP will hit and cancel it. Extinct will draw the first blood in the middle lane. Good RP, really good RP. If he didn't do RP there, they would have died probably there. So uh, really nice. He almost didn't get that off. Uh, exactly, almost did not. Nice cancel. 
There's more support coming in towards that middle lane now. No tell and fly. They realize with the tombstone going down, they've got to try and hold out this tier one tower. Their lineup is really structured around that push. Losing the SF, it really hurts them. But the big advantage the SF had at the very, very start, it doesn't hurt them anywhere near as bad as it could have. Yeah, he barely lost any gold though, but even just, you know, short of a minute in downtime is really big for Shadow Fiend because he farms so much every single minute. Not to mention the loss of souls when he dies. Yeah, nice but th play th by At the same team. time though, they moved everybody off that bottom lane and now Era finds himself with farm. So the Morphling's getting himself back into this game as well. Yeah, as you said, it was a really big commitment by Orange going in with so many there. But also, Dyer's Fnatic held their tower. They just attack. walked in with supporters and made sure the tower won't take any real damage. Yep. And Shadowfiend now back on track, just gonna keep farming. Yep, over 100 CS already. 107, 11 minutes, almost 12 minutes into this game. While Era's bringing down a tier 1 tower, won't be successful even with the catapult. Yeah. But man, Trixie, almost the unsung hero because he's been so quiet up on that top lane. He's got Mech, Soul Ring, 12 minutes into this game, a level 9 Darkseer. He is going to be ready to teamfight before the normal period of a Darkseer. Yeah, I mean, he was up against the solo and he had his team rotate up and help him take the tower, so he had a pretty good time up there. And that Mech is definitely going to be useful when they start pushing together. And there's not really any way that he can get ganked against you know, an undying and uh, CM. Mm -hmm. We do see him over here in the dire jungle. It's like the only way he can ki get killed is if he surges away and then the CM gets a frostbite almost instantly and then they can chase him down or rescue him out. Yeah, Antimage of course is scary and Antimage is almost finishing up Battle Fury but he needs a full Void Stone as well so not really as close as I thought. The problem he has, he though, is when he tries to do that. Like, he's just trying to harass Trixie down as Look much as attempts. possible. Yeah, and maybe that's the reason why. Mm -hmm. Trying to burn a lot, and there There's goes your surge. surge. And he's moving back, extinct with a lock. And there goes a Trixie into the wall. Mech charge, AM ulti. He didn't have a lot of mana, but he's going to get himself a little bit further away. Is he going to get back in range of the tier one tower? Oh Out of God. range. Net, he looked for one more. Couldn't do it. It's a profit. Where's the Prophet? He's back! He already tp in trying to help! Yeah, Prophet was there. That was four heroes trying to kill off Trixie, and he survived. That is huge. And now we see the trade-off. Fortification on the top lane. Mushi's already hurt. Ohio has already thrown out the oldie. Net doesn't have a lot of life points. The tier 1 tower will be fall from the bottom lane, and KYXY is hard for him to try magic up. They already tp support towards that top lane, because he won't have any help down here. Tier 1 tower goes in the bottom, and Honey, in the meantime, looks at the tier 1 tower in the mid. Yeah, many TPs going now towards the mid or towards the base, but Fnatic definitely, definitely not going to lose that top tower as so many resources were committed to trying to kill Trixie. Orange just couldn't keep pushing up there. So they have to fall back, they lose a tower. And the fact that Trixie escapes costs Orange deeply, how much is it? They're actually bringing the advantage back again, but now it's 2,000, the experience going the way of Fnatic. And the gold is continuously rising, 3.7, 3.8k coming up right now for Fnatic. Yeah, Fnatic, they still need level 6 on Vengeful. It's really big for the gank potential, especially if you have these ty uh, type of creeps on No-Tail, having Ensnare creeps or Stun creeps. If you can initiate with a swap, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So they need to hit that before they can really start ganging all over the place. But right now, they can just play out this more static type of game. If they push, okay, we'll just push as well. Because they have the RS, as we mentioned. They are stronger in that push. Bottom lane to see KYXY scary, scaring Morphling a little bit. It really freaks me out too when he does that because like some sometimes like Magnus has loved to do it to show off, but when you don't when you fail it, then well the world will watch and the world will giggle. Yeah, KYXY at least not failing it yet. Not yet. Some, not yet. Sometimes you get weird lag spikes though, and if that happens right as you get your RP off, then you would really, really feel stupid. No. So. But, but it is also a mental thing. Like, you can understand. It's not just because it's like, ooh, it's look at sharp. me. It's, it's just remember, I have RP off cooldown era. If you want to try and, like, wave form in on me, want to be aggressive on me, I've still got this available. So it's almost like flashing your ability at somebody. Quite literally, it flashes. Yeah, it's, it's just spam, you know, trying to stay as active as possible, just staying on the edge. He's got support TP in middle lane. There's a blink dagger up on that Magnus right now with the arcane boots. You know he wants blood. Now he has skewer already. He had cooldown, else I believe he would even have gone there right as a TP in. Mm -hmm. But now with this haste room coming in. Also, notice on Harney, man. With his BKB, he's waiting for the bottle yeah, to arrive. Yeah, he wants the bottle. And that's a, wait, it's, oh, it's an empty it's bottle. It's an empty bottle. He turned the courier around. I think it would have been faster to keep sending it to a base first and then bringing it. Just this is ridiculously slow. <laughs> Come on, yeah, career! Go! Yeah! Well done. All the way.
And Honey now can move at a faster pace. It's really awkward though that an empty bottle takes longer time to deliver than a full one. Slightly ironic that last Waste, stat. waste more. This T1 tower should be forfeit, but then again, KOA XY smokes up behind. You know he wants Harney, but he, he cannot beat the blinks on cooldown. The Iron Shell put the blink on cooldown, so he couldn't deny the him the tower. And that Centaur is moving very, very fast with the surge. It couldn't get the Sun next team, but look, look at, at the damage. damage from. And she has a Bracer. She is not a naked support. She has a Bracer on her as well, so that's a ridiculous amount of damage. So even with clothing, yes. Harney is able to get through it. <laughs> We've got maybe <laughs> Net hanging back a little bit further. He's got layers of strength to protect him from the Shadow Fiend. Well, Mushi, he's having a great time, man. This Battle Fury's now up and running, but great time ends when, when Fnatic moves into his jungle. And he realizes it too. He TPs or blinks himself into the river to TP himself back out to safety or bottom, bottom lane, which More is a farm. little bit safer. He saw farm and he goes for it. Another nice thing, though, for Fnatic is that they have a Morphling, which is pretty amazing against anti Mage in some regard. When you clone him, you get his mana burn, which is amazing. But. Also, Morphling doesn't like being hit by Antimage. He relies heavily on mana, so... Yeah, it's, called, uh, it's uh, sort of double-edged. Well, Mush is using both the edges to try yeah. and attack on Era. Only two points in the mana breaks. So this early on, not too strong. But speaking of not too strong, we haven't seen Fnatic really cluster up together yet. Yeah. There's still zero kills, and we're saying they have a firm lead in this game. I would definitely say so. Yeah. But when they move together, that's when they're really going to show the strength, because all these auras combining up when you put the heroes close to each other, that's the strength that this lineup has. Oh, yeah. I'm more, I'm one, oh, I'm more wondering Radiant when Roshan's going to happen. I'm pretty sure it's going to be in the back on a medallion, which maybe fly at one point will be able to afford. But when Harney's got this BKB, willing to use swap. a VS swap into the... Ooh, Misty and Snare. Good reaction by Mushi. Very, very quick on the tap. Yeah. Maybe he should just put a Centaur there on the swap and try to get that off. But he tried to get for an, an Snare first. We could see a troll starting to animate it. But to actually set up the trap before the trap was sprung. Yeah, but it's, it's hard. Nice attempt, though. And they might just be hitting into the Roshan here after D-Warding. The D-Ward doesn't really show it. Is it just barely outside? Click on that sentry, man. Let's <laughs> click on that sentry. <laughs> it is... <laughs> borderline. Borderline. Nice position. Absolute borderline. But they've got a nice observer ward on the high ground, room. so they'll, they'll see when Orange is going to come in. Yeah, so they know everything about it, and they can't give away at this <laughs> yeah, early road. They drop another sentry ward. They don't know where this observer ward is. They got hit by the Prophet Alban, which means they got vision that Orange. That one just but barely got it. Now they can see the observer ward. So they, they used three sentry wards to de-ward this out. Roshan's still alive, by the way. They got this observer ward, which is watching Mushi, Net, KYXY coming down, because that's a horrible choke point. Not to mention the skewer. Now the, now the vision's gone for Orange. Yeah, it's kind of scary to just walk in and go for Roshan against the Magnus with Blink and RP. Because mm -hmm. you don't know where you will end up, but the RP is still in cooldown. Not to mention right now on their top lane, something else to Fnatic's mind is the fact that Ohio is taking that tier 1 tower. Yeah, the clock is on them. Yeah, they've got to get back in there and finish the job. With the Howl of Terror, they've already got the negative 8 armor because of the presence of the Dark Lord and that Howl. So the Centaurs tank it up, and it looks like Orange is going to let this go. They yeah. take the tower on the top, Harney will pick up the Aegis the Immortal, and uh, they'll all bail themselves out. One kill in 19 minutes. Good job by Wernstein, I would say, because they really, you know, they got a trade, they got the top tower, that's good. They didn't just give it away for free, especially with a DD on Harney, that, that could have been so fast. So it's good that they just positioned themselves Radiant's around it. Top tower is under attack. And I, I, I almost want to t title this game Safety First. <laughs> safety First. This is Safety First. Both teams feel very confident about bringing it to late game. It's yep. pretty much a truce until 60 minutes. So like, like that, that no fire kind of thing when we're playing RTSs, like no one, no one can attack anyone for at least 10 minutes, and then we'll get ourselves into this game. See you in 40 minutes, Toby, and yeah. we'll see you the strongest. No, we don't need, we don't need 40 minutes, man. We're, we're like the 22 minute mark for me is still gonna be fine. That's when Trixie will hit his level. I should know he's got everything he needs. Maybe the fourth level up in Vac, and then he's a team fighting machine. And Arnie's also the same. Like he's got Blink Dagger, BKB, and two levels up in the ultimate. And something in this game are giving me uh, Navi flashbacks. Can you think about what that is, Toby? Uh, that will be a Dark Seer into. Well, wasn't Alchemist done? Was the combination with an SS Smack Bang in the middle of it all? Yeah, it was more. I was more referring to the BKB and Blink Dagger on Shadow Team. Make me so happy every time. This is an amazing fighting build, and I love it. Well, at least it's not BTs on Honey this time around. <laughs> well, we'll see if they want to jump in. 
KOXY is already, well, empowering himself. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. But at the same time, again, Ohio, this is the problem of Nature's Prophets. Ohio is you, just pushing every lane. Yep, you want a team fight, and he'll make you pay every single time. Now Fnatic, like, they took Roshan before, but it cost him a T1 tower. They're trying to take a tier 2 tower right now, but it cost him a T1 tower in the bottom lane, and Mushy farming up their jungle. These trades are not worth it right now. And, well, hey, Strunt, Harney, he's chasing the free gold, chasing net around the tree line. The creep will actually give him the vision. One raid with the Chenyu, wonderful blink. Body blocks him, the one little part they can get out. The tier two tower will go down as well. But at the same time, Mushy, he pushed that bottom lane very quickly that someone must come back. Same as the top lane, Era must defend up against Ohio. Yeah, no blink, uh, no TP scroll on Harney, but he has a haste rune and blink dagger, so he's there very fast. And, of course, Era taking the top. So both teams pretty much running a duo carry. I mean, you have Furion along with Antimage on the Dire side, and then, of course, needless to say, the Morphling along with Shadow Fiend is also a pretty strong carry combo. Mm -hmm. And I want to see what Hani is going to go for as next item. Casual heal on his Centaurs. He wants to keep it. He wants to get the Trip Centaur. Yeah. I wonder if he's going for Necro on uh, No Tail. I would put it's gonna be, him. It could be an Aghanim, it could be a Four Staff. But it could also be a Necro book if he wants to push this much. Well, there's an easy way. Oh, Ooh, hello, Mushy. Stun him. That's some good. Well, stun first stun. Second time. stun. Third stun. Stay where you are, Mushy. Shockwave. He blinks out. Mushy doesn't like those creeps. Those no. creeps fight back. Trixie even tries to help heal them up. Brings in the mech charge for him because th that's what the hand of gold was used for to keep him alive. And then Mushy wants to claim him. <laughs> but it, sh it shows you the level of control you can gain out of Mushy when he blinks in over aggressively. You jump in that far, that quick, and without any any real true vision. If SF was closer, he would have died there. Because oh yeah. Shadowfiend hits really hard, and, and he's, all that he's still TC. Got, he's still like 3,300 gold left to spend. Too, he's gonna hit even harder soon. Yeah. No blink dagger on Darkseid this time. The four staff instead, so he's gonna be sure to save his team a little bit from those RPs and bottom lane. Might see exactly that. Honey's trying to hide it out. Being oh, no look at up. Mushi. Oh, stole. This, this time it's in range. Mushi, you Wait. little thief. He just stole a triple ancient stack. It seems Radiant Sentry Wards are stronger than Dire Sentry Wards. Are you sure? Are you sure it's just not the angle? I'm thinking it's the angle. It's <laughs> the angle, too. Totally. Either way, they're going to... Yes, they do. It's, <laughs> it's the angle. If you scroll up and down, you <laughs> get a different circle. Just a, just a feature. Small little. Push your bottom lane. It, looks, it really looks like Orange Ohio. Dog. Is he? Is he? He's nah, he doesn't care. Tier 2 for a Tier 1. Trady McTrade trade is what we're looking at right now. Yeah, they're not going to fight any time soon. Orange, they're saying, okay, you have good fights, you have good auras. We're going to wait, and then we're going to RP you and slay you. That's their plan. Well, that's a very good play, man. Right now, it's executing nicely. It's keeping the advantage pretty much level. It's pretty much level. It hasn't really changed rounds since they early start. I mean, one team has one kill, the other team has one kill. I would say it's even. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Zeus on that one. Crystal Maiden being the best player on Orange. One zero zero. <laughs> we see a clap for her. Very nice. Yeah. But and, and, and then Harney, 1-1. One, one. In the series world, though, Nature's Prophet is almost going to hit up to his uh, Hex oh. now. And when he has Hex, they can start catching out people really hard. Having Magnus, having Hex, they're starting to solve their uh, disabled problem a little bit. What would you like to go on SF? Would you want a sheep stick? Would you want a monkey king bar? Would you want a butterfly? Or would you like a point booster? An Aghanims. Yeah. No, we actually talked to Fnatic earlier on and they, they always uh, love going for the Scotty. Both Era and Hani have a definite love for Scotty, it seems. The slow is really good and the stats are also amazing. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the build. Bottom lane, all the disabled. Trixie. It's going to go down. Yeah. Big gang. They use an RP for it as well. But that means they've also expended a lot of their abilities. So they cannot keep fighting this one. They, and that kill happened, but both teams still seem to be very, very happy just to, to let this game go on. It's the only reason why you would build into a Scardi, because you know you've got the time to farm. Exactly. Heading straight into what's pretty much one of the most expensive items in the game. Really late game tier. The only problem right now for Fnatic is now this deep, aggressive <laughs> for Orange. They want to they wanna look at it. Every, everything comes at once. So we get a side the vice and we get a Manda style all at once. Yes. And looks like smoke as well for Orange. Yeah, Chen chips in well, a little smoke. And of course, it was a four staff that he purchased. So they have double four staff on Fnatic already. And that's a really nice thing to have to just make the enemy run around after you in the team fights. Mm -hmm. But I feel that Fnatic, they must be a 
pretty frustrated that they can't force the team fights to happen. Yeah. Like, early on in the game, around the 17 to 30 minute mark is where I said this lineup should be exploding and starting to control the game and it's strong in the fights. Mm -hmm. But Fnatic, they're playing so, or Orange, they're playing so well around it. Well, they don't have any other heroes, Fnatic, to like to jump back. Like you could have a Coddle that could just relocate you if you're trying to split push on a lane. Mm. Like if you had yourself a Tinker or a Prophet, then you'd have those kind of options. Like or BTs to an extent would help you to stop the split push, but it still stops you from doing your own push. I would still say like the the pick that we said during the draft stage would be what stops split push. Having a Beastmaster, you would have maybe even stronger push than you have with a Shadow Fiend mm -hmm. because you can actually use it for attacking towers and they would actually be able to kill people who go on side lanes. Fnatic's trying to set up a gank here on the bottom lane, but it's to completely no success whatsoever, as they realize on the on the top lane, Mushy is here. In fact, I think now we're going to start looking over towards Era, because he is the only split pusher. The only split pusher in Fnatic. He's trying all the time, and he has his ulti, of course, getting jump back to Illusion on the bottom lane. Ohio wants him, though. He comes in, already pops off one. He used the Sprout to trigger off the Lincoln Spear, so they can follow with a Hex RP as well. Era to go down, and Skewer on nothing but air. Good kill. Yeah, he just wants to get out of there. That's a nice kill, and starting to favor Orange a little bit more here. With the pickups on carries, or even on Trixie, and Scotty, of course. I have Scotty is the least popular item in Dota 2. Only a hundred times, but that's a hundred, man. That's a hundred. That's a hundred. That's the century of Scotty's. It's the century. Yeah, Mushy, you're going to be really careful about blinking in like that. He blinks in like that. If there is even, even a remote chance the Fly is getting on that level 11 and just pops that, he will get swapped straight back into a quick stun and a quick hold and possibly a oh, quick mid, death. Oh, they actually killed on lane. Yeah. Wow. Nice pick off. So net going down. Well, she also decides to run smack bang in the middle of Fnatic. Yeah, he doesn't really care about anything. He's, he's going to the farm. They called out someone else. There's actually dust over on Ohio on the run. Chen Yuke, he's trying to TP out. There should be a back, and that down. will cancel it. And he will be going down right now. So 3-3 three, three on the board. Yeah, starting to get some action now. And nice pickoffs here for Fnatic. Really big, but meanwhile, Crystal Maiden has been split pushing top. Would you imagine? Uh, yeah, not a phrase I would have thought you would say coming to the international. Uh, <laughs> we see CM split pushing top, yeah. yeah that's but anime split pushing bottom lane, and he's up at 3.2k gold and Harney. Well, instantly he says, just please remove yourself from lane. Look at that movement speed from Mushy. He gets hit from that once. The IS Guardi once. Even if he blinks himself away, Fnatic have every kind of ability they need to keep chasing him. You put that surge up on the SF, he'll be right behind whatever hero yeah, and, and he kill also, him off. There's no one that can escape. He also, of course, has the blink dagger. And Roshan will be up very soon. There's a DD Double rune being picked damage. up here on bottom. Both teams saw it as the center was there. And Antimage just keeps farming. I'm a little bit worried for Fnatic, as they have... Sure, they have Morphling, who's a pretty, pretty comfortable hero from Era to play. But with this build on Morphling along with uh, Shadowfiend, the DPS against carries is not amazing right now. Mm -hmm. If they had something like a Shadow Blade, if they had something like uh, MKB or Crit even, it would deal a lot more damage towards the carries. Scotty is really nice for just chasing down and dying, for example, but yeah. to kill off Mushi, they don't have the best items for this. They don't even have a Hex uh, or anything like that on the Darkseer as he went into a full staff. It's almost as though they don't really want to care about Mushi. Like, the, the main target here is, in fact, everybody else on the orange line. You take out Undyne, you take out Crystal Maiden, you take out the Nature's Prophet, Mag throws the RP, he basically is just a walking mammoth, and then you're like, oh, now we can focus on the enemy match who still has to come in close and fight us if he wants to kill us. Chasing him isn't the biggest concern. Taking out towers and pushing inside the base, that's gonna happen off the back of a team fight. Radiant team fight tower. when? He's Maybe 90 minutes? Attack. We don't know. Anything is possible. Yeah, I really like this by Mushi. He sees everyone heading into a Roche pit, so he just goes towards the mid. It's already pushed so far, but he just goes here and starts attacking Radiant the tier two. Tower. And he has that one one creep that stops the backdoor regeneration from kicking in. Goes TV down has fast to come back in. Well, they're not going to finish it in time. Roshan's only done half of his life. Yeah, and now Morphling had TP'd away, but he has an illusion always. Anytime you see Morphling TP into a lane and Roshan is being attempted, then you know he's, he's still going to be there. Mm -hmm. Shadow Fiend. Is he really looking to chase up that far? Yeah, he blinked after a Crystal Maiden, but couldn't catch her. Top, top, top lane. We just see this by Antimage and Nature's Prophet. This push. Again, Roshan being attempted. Yeah. Under a half. Fnatic want to get in here right now. They've still got the undead army now, not to worry about. The tombstone goes down, and that is going to be Roshan, taken by Fnatic. Aegis Immortal picked up as well. And whoa, BKB, there's a blink up for that one too. SF managed to catch out the Undying. Yeah, that's a nice kill. 
that Annie Major taking the T2 tower in mid and the T2 tower is lost on top. So Orange is striking everywhere. It's this is almost no tail, it's like no Fnatic tail. Dota versus Fnatic Dota. No tail TP's the base. Attack. Yeah, a little bit. Because this this is what Fnatic was well known for in the European scene. Orange is, is playing it perfectly, almost to a point where Fnatic, like if this game yes. keeps going like this, they will lose a rack and only by choice. Have you seen the gold on Mushi now? I'm watching Era dying on bottom lane first. Mushi can spend that 6.2k gold in the moment. Era holding the waveform and the troll trap up on Mushi. Yeah. They get themselves away, but looks like there's another surprise. KYX White, no, surprise won't be, won't be burst. Oh, that TP away. They almost have gone in and just done something as Lincoln's was on cooldown. Is this going to be a straight abyssal, abyssal blade for Mushi? Would be my instant assumption. It would be really good, because you don't really want to rush a butterfly when there's a Darkseer and Morphling on the enemy team. They would benefit so much if you just go for agility build. They would be like, thank you, our illusions are now super strong. In fact, also, there, there it is. The Basher has just been picked yeah. up by the Animage. So he has the full Super Basher if he wants to buy it. Of course, would not have buyback, but this early on, he can sort of go for it and just surprise someone. See Hani's next item coming up. Lifesteal for him. So Helm of the Dominator and Eye of Skadi. Available. And Fly's looking around for anything now. He's got a little bit of help. Morphling Replica is, is what's following Fly there, so you're not seeing double. He's got the gem on him as well. While well, Ira's playing on the top lane, he'll find Ohio up here. Ohio up to 3.8k gold as well. I'm wondering if net worth is even, even a good thing to keep up. Maybe just the current gold. And seeing an anti mage with 4.9k gold, 4.7 on the mag, 4.1k on the profit. The push is really coming in towards mid now. This time, no massive split push. Radiant's bottom is being pushed by Mushi, though, so tier 2 is threatened, but if Ma they go now... Magnus spent his money on one thing before this fight began, and that's exactly what he needs. A BKB is now up for KYXY. And Harney, he's entering the base, attacking on the tier 3 towers. They want to bring it down, but KYXY always wants to, also wants to grab him. That's not happening. More fling. He picks up a full Manta, so it makes more bottom of himself. Tower is going down. Like, it's going down even faster than the own tower wall. At the same rate, at least. So this is actually, this split push is working. It's one hero versus four. Oh, they're going to catch someone. Who is it going to be? Chen's already they sending people back to base, and they found... Yep, you're right, they found Harney. That's a big one. RP, hold him there. He can't wind anything up. His dead ulti will pop. Actually, almost... He brings Extinct down to half his life points. Hey, it actually hurts a whole lot. Mm-hmm. That was maximum set of souls on death. Maximum but it's 66 seconds. Even if Orange want to push in, it won't help. Furion. But catching out Fly, that's a big thing. Hex still on cooldown. Fly, well, there's a shockwave. There's a swap. He's trying to get himself out. Hand of God, but Frostbite holds him there. KYXY, even respect BKB to the Vengeful Spirit. Yeah, I, I don't know. Res I, <laughs> I'm, call I'm calling it respect because there's no other logical reason. Yeah. We call it respect. Respect. SF's going to buy back. He's realizing Orange is pushing in. Now this will be when Orange fall back. They won't want to go in when the SF is, is going to respawn. All they want to do is force his buyback anyway. And Orange, they claim a really strong lead by this. Amazing play by Ohio, catching out first the Shadow Fiend and then also the Vengeful there. And the split push by Mushi, yeah, like, it's, it's, it seems a little bit like, yeah, he pushed the lane very well, but he really has good awareness about when he should be somewhere on the map. Mm -hmm. And he really plays to, to the style of Orange. It's actually really problematic too when you think about it. Like, imagine Rax goes down for Fnatic. They're going up against Prophet as well as Animage, who is, as you were saying, split pushing perfectly, he knows when to be where. And then you want to try and push back against that? You've, you've managed to bring down the, the tower in the mid, and that's fantastic. But a mid Rax is a lot easier for a team to defend, especially in the later portions of the game when Roshan becomes a bit more of a priority, than an off lane, especially your bottom lane. When that starts pushing out, you lose a lot of momentum around your own jungle, and that's a lot of farm which goes to waste. And you're seeing Fnatic, they're grouping up again as five, because this time around, Orange don't have a huge amount of momentum pushing out the side lanes. No, not a huge amount, but Furion, he is thinking about taking care of that. They don't see too many people yet, they see Aero on the mid, but he, he's really careful on Ohio, trying to think, is this a bait? Do you want to catch me on bottom? So, TP's down there, sends in some Treants, just to test the water. We don't have to fight. Yeah. I'd actually like to see how many kills per minute that would be. To see if it was like, oh, that's a five minute game, nine kills, okay, done, GG. In comes Zero. He's just going straight for Rax. 
Fortification's not available for Lucy them, and he's going to bring this down. Fight. They already trigger off the Lincoln Spear, and Era, he wants to stand his ground. You're right, Mushi comes in, a bit of play being used. Era, AGC Mono will pop, RP, catches Trixie at the back lines. There's actually two inside of that one. SF winds up the Oldman. BKB was helping, and Mushi going down so quickly to that SF. Meanwhile, a little bit further down, net with the Oldman. Ohio will die to Era. Fnatic, they're breaking this base right now. Back and back in again. Maybe kill up net, a little bit further up. KYXY able to get himself back to base safely. But the mid racks. It actually holds here. Orange don't lose it, and Fnatic are bailing. They've got a bottom lane to worry about. Yeah, so Rax are still standing. Took a lot of damage, but that was with Aegis. They lost two. They forced a buyback from Furion, but that was pretty much Fnatic's best shot at pushing that mid lane. And they need to push this island so much, and it's really risky now. Look at the damage that Nature's Prophet is starting to deal. He actually has the, well, basically the money for a Daedalus right now. Yeah. The only thing I'm, I kind of wish he did go they was... will try bottom. ...was, was the Desolator, especially after that waveform from Era. Triggered Lincoln Sphere. Mushi in there. Chen trying to send Era back to base. He needs to hand of God. He's going to get him out! Mushi... Strength morph as quickly as possible. He didn't use Manta Style. He had it ready, and he did not Manta Style for the DPS, so... <gasps> They would definitely have killed him if he used Manta style. Big misplay by Mushi, I would say. Might come back to haunt him right now. Remember, this is a best of one. Everything comes down. Yeah. Your international career comes down to one game. You lose it, you're out. Definitely so. Best of one's really scary anytime you go up in it. And Mushi was probably pretty intimidated by the fact that there's so many, you know, they were so close to the enemy base. Maybe he didn't want to use Manta style aggressively because of that. I'm actually wondering, how the hell did he get 2.3k reliable gold? Kills. One kill. <laughs> One kill? One kill, man. <laughs> One big kill. Not how the system works. No, it's the towers, <laughs> I believe. Yeah. When you get tower lasted, it's reliable gold, I believe. So he just managed to save every single bit of tower gold. What is he actually sitting on? It's 101. So yeah, every single bit of the tower gold saved. And Crystal Maiden, 203 up on her. Looks like Trixie. Oh, wow, wow. That's a lot of damage. Meg charge surge away. Almost he profit ultimate. Comes in through the side and nicely channeled too. He channeled it a little bit further down the bottom lane to then have a trigger up onto the Darkseer. And as far as buybacks available, well, Darkseer's got one. Yeah, Darkseer has a buyback for sure, but that was a really big pick off again and you don't really want a buyback because he's going for a Hex and he almost had it. Link up, he misses! Huge miss from KOXY, swap back up, he'll skill fly nice out, skill and then up. the jump in, it's coming from Mushy, he's stunned up quickly on Hani, there's no follow through, he has to jump himself back out again, and now, well, the Sprout Trixie, four start away, able to survive, only barely, there's a couple of fake AMs on the field, meanwhile in the mid, the real one, killing off the Chen, Ohio back down to the Era. bottom lane, Era, well, Ohio, low on life, 230, Double and kill. Mushy, in through the rear, brings down the SF, Double kill for him, and this opens up the bottom ranks. SF buyback is on cooldown, and Trixie is forced to throw the ulti out here, and Mushi just hop skips it over. They will take this bottom ranks here, Orange, and there is nothing the Fnatic could do to stop them. Really nice play in that team fight by Orange, just going in, claiming this bottom racks, getting both of them, and just gonna get out, or even go further. Oh, they yeah. want more, man. They want more. They want to win this now. They don't want to wait. There's gold for the Shadow Fiend's buyback, but he doesn't have it ready yet. It's still on cooldown. Orange We're counting at 34 that. seconds. Orange, they're going to retreat. Yeah. This game is not over just yet. Fnatic, though, they are crippled. Really crippled now. And as you mentioned earlier, losing Rax to an Antimage and Furion, that's when you're starting to feel like, oh, damn, they're going to split us even more now. So going down mid lane is going to be hard for Fnatic with those big creeps pushing in bottom. This is really a concern for me. Fnatic, when they get to this position, normally, I don't want to say the word choke, but there's definitely some decision making which they have got to do 100% perfectly. And we, and we see most of the time when they do this, like we saw it, we saw it when we got cast an EMS, they just decide and go, oh, well, this is like, it's almost a hopeless case. Let's just all go five mid. Maybe leave one puck to defend. Yeah, it's, it's really a little bit like that. But in this game, from the get-go, I would say as soon as they had level five on Chen already, they should start to just look for kills with Vengeful and Chen and just smoke all the time. They will try it now, but looking at how much they're being pushed, it's going to be so hard. And Morphling, well, he has his illusion. Illusion. Rush, 10 minutes. Let's go. Uh, 10 seconds. Fake one's coming through. There's a blink over. And they found, well, KYXY, but skewers away to safety. 
very difficult to catch one person out. Observer sentries, in fact, double sentries. One is just not enough. Yeah. That's, that's some decent sentries. And all about the vision, man. That bottom lane is still pushing it. This is Fnatica on the clock. Roshan's respawned. There's a tornado which is already going to make life very, very difficult. And that bottom lane is getting a lot more momentum. And someone from Fnatic has to go back and deal with that. There's yeah. actually they double to, tornadoes. They need to out. try and take the Roshan if they want to, but that's so risky against Magnus oh. and Antimage just standing there saying, yeah, okay, what are you going to do? Mag's ready. Prophet just threw the ulti out as well. It's not getting on Hani or Ear because it's still inside the... Wow, 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 wow. Orange, orange. You caught napping. Maybe. Where's the jump in? They don't know what the status of Roshan is. Aegis and Cheats. It's going to get a Fnatic here. Cheats on the SF. Ira takes the Aegis and they're bailing quick. Wow, that's so huge for Fnatic. Just getting this one seems like pretty easy. Uh, there was there was no contest at all. Yeah, they could have tried even more to scout with the Crystal Nova or something, but... Mm -hmm. Or just go in, send in an C illusion through, from Antimates. Cut through the tree line, like skewer through the tree line if you have to, it's... Yeah, a little bit too careful maybe from Orange there, but... They're still in a commanding, commanding position, even giving this away. But definitely Fnatic working their way back a little bit here. It, it gives Fnatic hope during the next team fight. that's the main thing. Oh yeah. Like, even if the RP is going to hit, even if you do see that SF drop very, very quickly, Honey's still got 2.5k life points, and that's going to just pop the cheese, come back to life again, and then the Morphling, he's already hard enough to kill. They're going to try it. RP's going to be used. Linker Spear was triggered. Era, and swapped he away! Lives. Pulled out! Fly, taking it for the team, and he took it hard! He did. That swap was really a huge save, and something that he needed to do. If they lost the Morphling then, if he, if, even if it was like they just lost the Aegis then, that would have already been a huge win for Orange. It's yeah. still going to make Orange think twice about going back in, because they use the RP as well to get that kill. But it looks like Magnus is going to have two of those shortly. Perseverance up on him, so refresher on the way. Another reason that he really needed to do that save is because they don't really have the AoE lockdown. Sure, they have a Shadow Fiend and Darkseer, but they don't have the stuns available. And Venge can't just run in and stun someone to save the Morphling when he comes back up. If it... Oh, but mid. Mid. Nice send home. He's going to be fine. SS going to be good. They do lose the, the Wild Wing. But even just with, I believe that was one or two hits on the Chen, and he almost went down to this Nature's Prophet. He is an absolute beast now, even having lifesteal. Ten on a Satanic on that guy, but then again, he's, he's still, he still can be controlled. There's no BKB up on him. I, then again, I say controlled. VS and Chen are the only two heroes who actually have a level of control. And Harney, well, there's a quick blink away from uh, KYXY. Yeah. And this could, be, this could be an all-in push down the mid. This yeah. could just be everyone together. And this is what I'm talking about with Fnatic. Sometimes they just say, just blow it all. Let's go. But if they do so, you know who's on that bottom lane again. Mushi makes copies of himself. And he's already looking to go onto that mid tower. In fact, he's going to intercept the creep wave as well. Radiant's so Fnatic will lose their momentum here. Yeah, with that butterfly, his illusions are now really strong. So he can even start dealing some nice damage to that tower with only his illusions. Wow. Or at least has his E-Blade. That's a real mushy right there. Looking for the Mana Void, not going to throw it. And then copies of Annie Mage. Oh, nice copy, but what Fnatic need is really a team fight where they can get both the Dark Sea Illusion as well as Fnatic's or oh, Era's copy. If they can get that, then they can just DPS down Orange with it. Also having their Auras makes it even stronger. But if they don't get nice, nice vacuum and wall, this is going to be amazingly difficult, you know. Yeah, it's especially once Mushi picks up something else. If he if he grabs a heart as his last thing here, Orange she, even wondering so if that's gonna be a, if that's gonna be the best choice. Because Honey, like if he gets one more DPS, I'm sitting at 6k gold. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Extinct, four staffed away, but Blink follows up. One hit, two hit, three hit, and the fourth. Oh, Frostbite! Frost versus Frost. Honey can't blink again. Morphling waves up. He's looking for the last hit, and he's getting it away. Extinct. They cannot chase him, but meanwhile on the top lane, Fortification has to hold the tier 3 down to make that split. Fly is here, but Mushy, he's taking the mid while up on top. It's himself also taking it. Ohio goes in the shadow the plane, and deeper down, they hold their racks for now. Trixie backs up. He's actually playing around with Net as well as the Crystal Maiden at the same time. Mid lane, no tail goes down. Chen got sniped. Also chasing on bottom lane. A Vistle Blade ready, gonna blink on him. Well, she's right behind him, in. and there he hits him. He tried to stop and surge, and now the gem. And also, just to answer to the call for Racer on the Crystal Maiden there, she actually had 3 HP more than she would have died off from that race. So, in the end, it wouldn't have mattered. Too bad. Something which has been lost again. 
gems, one for each eye, goes the way of Undying. And they both belong to No-Tail. This <laughs> is just money which is slipping through the fingers <laughs> wow, of Fnatic. That's, that's so much money lost. Uh, if you're an Orange fan right now, you'll be, you'll be cheering at home as you see the graph. Yeah, that's 1,700 gold that he has paid for those. And then you have the fact that it went to the enemy team, so a lot of the gold difference will even be applied to that. A new item will be very good around now, Mushy. In fact, in, that's Harney's Eagle Song he's trying to get back. So it's a butterfly coming in the way of Harney. And he has the cash for it. He just wants to get the courier back safely. Yeah, he doesn't want to have that thing sniped. If he's, that happens, then... He's waiting for the movement speed in four seconds. But now he's going to get back. Harney already being attacked by Mushi. But Mushi will be forced out now. One thing about Shadowfiend and Morphling is that they are nice carries in the regard that they can hit very easily. Unlike Antimage, they don't blink in and start trying to go melee range. They can actually stand from quite afar and hit. But so far, the Magnus KYX player has played so well. He just locked them down and he has a refresher. So yep. it's going to be it's gonna be troublesome to deal some damage in the next fight. Well, that full butterfly being done. Actually landing the hits can be more troublesome for the Animage, Abyssal Blade or not. And he buys a BKB Mushy. So he's decided with the remainder of his items, his last item slot is worthwhile going in. Yeah. Having, having that, B, that BKB. Ten he, seconds. He may, he may sell the battle, fu battle Fury as well, but you're right. Ten seconds of immunity. And there is nothing on Fnatic that will stop him, apart from maybe a Troll Trap. But no tell. I don't know about you, man, but I'm not seeing creeps on the map. No. I mean, there's... There's the Troll Trap and there's the Swap, but really, where's she gonna swap him to? She always stands in defensive position, and if she swaps him even further in, she's the only one who can follow up with a stun, so she would have to run back and actually stun him. And they're gonna try to Radiance go for something here on Mushi. They'll have to be quick. They'll have to be very, very quick. And they throw down the Observer Wars so they can see him. Mushi was pushing that out, and, uh, well... Well... Links into the tree line. They don't see him with that Observer Ward right there. Yeah, but he doesn't see anyone anywhere. And, uh... Is, is, is he trying to break the smoke? Yeah, I guess so. And now he jumps out. Fly, does he turn? He turns! That is the most irritating thing ever. Right as they stop trying to kill him, he's out there and farming. But they, they look for one. He drops himself into it! The BKB will pop, but he's Radiance still being slowed down right now. Raid left no effect. Blinks away to safety. But the 10-second BKB is now on cooldown. Uh, 10 sec BKB is gone, that's always something, but he doesn't go down and he still has 5,000 gold. Mm -hmm. And then back to farming more. And he needs more gold, man. He needs more gold. He has not finished farming. Definitely not finished. And we also see on Furion, he has 5,300 gold, so he can go for a full MKB and pretty Dying much always a uh, buyback as well. Fine. I believe, yeah, he will have it. He just bought it. 2.3k gold left after buying it. So... He is just missing a Satanic, and then he's done. That's if he wants to complete up with a Satanic. I'd like to see a butterfly on him, personally. I don't, I don't really want to see a remake on that game, that 100-minute game where you just I don't, don't know. go in and finish. I, I was entertained. Y you were entertained, Toby, but that's, that's you. You have a twisted sense of what's good in Dota. So I'm not going to lie on that one, man. Like, yeah. you, you, you play with me. I'll stay as a prophet farming inside the jungle until 90 minutes until we take a racks. That's fine. That's uh, fine. You'll farm 90 minutes and then hope that you were still a bear and just have even more item slots. But <laughs> don't, don't for, you just need profit to split push. You can win on nothing but that. That's true. As for Orange, they could just try to force it now because pushing out the sidelines is not really something that's hard to do. So doing that, they could just go and force a fight. But they want to play it safe and just get up even more items. Mm -hmm. But really now, there's nothing more that Mushi can buy. And I would say that Ohio is getting pretty gear capped. He can add a Satanic and... He can even drop the mid. Yanks on the way mid. The ping's coming out. Mushi wants to come in and fight. He's going to find real ones. They find no doubt. Four staff down. He's right next to Mushi now. Four staff away. Trixie, hand of God, as well as the Meg Charge, keeps well at least Trixie alive, but they lose the Chen. Oh. Racks are down. Almost. Fortification saves it. Mid. Sentry, well, they couldn't back him back in time. Are they going to split it all the way to them? I think so. Blink down. Wow, net. Wow, net. RP catches out the two. Now they can try and fight. Oh, they look for the racks. One last hit. Mushy's down there doing it. Copies of him. There's a secondary RP. Still holding him in position. And Honey starting to wind up the only but Ohio will hold him in position as well. Are they even going to get one? Era comes up. He wants Ohio. Honey's going to go down right now. Double kill for Mushy. Buyback by Darkseer. Buyback by the SF. But damage. Mushy, he is destroying triple ultra. And he will take the top racks. And GG. Comes out, Fnatic have been eliminated by the Malaysians. Orange will advance themselves forward.
taking minimal kills, but a lot of time. 50, 24, the end, 6 to 20. The hope for Meepo ends. Whoa, then again, there's always Orange. Yeah, there's Orc Chon, you know. Or Chon, yep. Yeah. We have seen it before. There's others to carry the torch. Of course, there is more competitions coming up. We've got another three matches coming up later on tonight. The big props to Orange. They will advance and prove their worth. We, of course, go back over to the panel for a bit of a break. Orange then victorious over Fnatic, but in all fairness, Fnatic, they, they had the game uh, at some point, at least an advantage I felt in the game with the, the amount of good farm they got. Um, ben in the mid lane on the SF. Era, um, Era, of course, didn't have a great time on the Morphling, but they got a few early towers down. Mm -hmm. I just don't think the item choices were great for Fnatic. Yeah, it's not only that, I don't think they were prepared to go that long of a game because you don't want a, or orange, I mean, Venge had actually... I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Venge and Shen Pro were really... Yeah, no. <laughs> <You're done. laughs> yeah, I'm no. kidding. Come on. Venge and Shen are really good at, like, late game. They're one of the supports that scale really well. You can swap. We saw the save on Era's Morphling when they ages. Chen with the send back. But I think Venge was more as, like, an early game hero, and they didn't really press their advantage. They had, like, five kills maybe the whole entire game, and that's not really what I expected from this heavy minus armor lineup and the early blink dagger. Yeah, uh, Malk, what did you make of the lanes? How fanatic land? I mean, I think. I'm, just I'm, I'm asking you that on purpose, by the way. Oh, you all right, James. No, I didn't watch the first 20 minutes of the game, so. Uh, <laughs> I will save you. I will save you. Screw okay. me. No, I got this. So, what I think Fnatic should have done is, when you pick a, a lineup that has Chen and Vengeful Spirit in it, and you don't have any kill until the 20-minute mark, you're doing something wrong. You need to push your advantage. They they went ahead and they took the mid-tier two tower, but it's way too late. You need to be much more aggressive with a lineup like that. I realized they didn't want, really want to fight the Undying, because Undying is really, really great against Chen if you get the tomb down before the creeps are in close proximity of the tomb, but they needed to force the issue, especially with the amount of harm they got on the Shadow Fiend. Yeah. Bruno, what did you make of the match? Well, I have to agree with you in the terms of the item progression was quite weird. Uh, 15 minutes into the game, uh, Shadow Fiend had 140 CS, which is pretty much unheard of. That's a lot of CS. And he decided to go for BKB Blind Dagger, which uh, the BKB is reasonable. You have to go for that in, uh, in that game, but the Blind Dagger didn't bring anything at all. If you're going for anything, Rush Butterfly, Desolator, Get Crit, Get Shadow Blade, pretty much any other alternative would have made them accomplish something. The fact that they went for Blink Dagger was kind of nice because you could get the big plays but didn't accomplish anything at all. And regarding the anti mage versus Morphling, I think the story is bringing us back against the TI2 when these were the top two um, carries in the game. Back then they were 7 and 6. Uh, Morphling got a slight advantage right there. But in the global, actually 42 40 for anti mage means that these two have been fighting for quite a long time. It was pretty even, but in the end it was not about these two, it was about the supporting cast. And while Morphling had uh, a Blink Dagger Shadow Fiend with them, uh, there was a Magnus and an Nature's Prophet on Orange side. Yeah, I don't even think it was just the Blink Dagger and the BKB, it was possibly the Scotty too afterwards. Like at the last fight, he got RP'd, he got RP'd again, and then he got sheeped. That's 10 seconds of disable, yeah. and it was just way too late. They had way too many items on the opposite team to control the unbelievable amount of farm on the Shadow Fiend. Yep, yeah, unfortunately didn't work out for Fnatic, but it did work out for Orange, and I believe we got an interview with Ohio with Casey.